What's going on everybody? Chrome on Rust here. We're going to be taking a look at an Atelius build for the Demon Hunter, of course. We're going to also be using the Dayanetta set. Dayanetta is going to turn your vault's discipline cost into a hatred cost, which is basically going to mean that you're going to be able to vault permanently. The faster that you can vault, the more you're going to be able to reduce the cooldown on your Reign of Vengeance. The more you can reduce the cooldown on your Reign of Vengeance, the more damage you're going to be able to deal. We're going to be getting into all that and more in this guide, so we're just going to jump right into things. Now, your Dayanetta set is going to leave a clone of yourself behind after you vault, as well as give you the Rattle and Roll rune. And then Two Piece is going to remove the discipline cost, and it's going to give your vault a hatred cost, so you're going to be able to spam your vault constantly. So this is going to be a physical based build in Natalius. I do know it's new, so I'll just go over it one more time, at least for this video. The two piece is going to reduce the cooldown of your Reign of Vengeance by two seconds when you hit with a Hatred spending or a Hatred generating attack. So you want to be spending or generating Hatred with your skills as often as possible. The best way to do that is either going to be through using Rapid Fire, using Strafe, or using Vault with the Dayanetta set. Now, the 4-piece is going to increase the damage of your Reign of Vengeance, very good, as well as the 6-piece is just going to give you an all-around 400% increased damage, and you're going to as well take 30% reduced damage for 5 seconds. So the 2-piece is going to reduce the cooldown of your Reign of Vengeance when you hit enemies with attacks, and then the 6-piece, as long as you spam your Reign of Vengeance every 5 seconds, you're going to be able to keep that 400% damage buff up, as well as the damage reduction buff up which that's not going to be a problem with this build. You're going to be having the buff up, you know, constantly. So we're going to jump into the skills. This is going to be a physical based build. You know, most players refer to this as an Armageddon type of build. I do believe that was like one of the first builds that used the Dayanettas and Natalia set. Now, Raid of Vengeance with Dark Cloud. Don't want to change that out. Companion with Wolf, Wolf Companion. Just a really great damage buff for you, as well as if you were having hatred problems, you really want to solve your hatred problems through your gear, so that way you can use the Wolf Companion, but you could throw on the Bat Companion just for a little bit of additional hatred regeneration, and that definitely should get you taken care of. Next skill, Preparation with Punishment. This is really how you want to be increasing your hatred. You know, every 20 seconds we're going to be stacking cooldown. I think my gear is sitting at around 40% or something like that currently. So I'm able to use this about every 12 seconds, giving you 75 hatred. It's just a great way to gain the hatred that you need. Now, Vault with Action Shot. This is a must. You have to use Action Shot because... As we said, the two-piece on the Natalia's is anytime we use a Hatred Spending or Generating Attack, we're going to be able to reduce the cooldown of our Reign of Vengeance. Now, the thing about Vault with Action Shot is once you're using the Dayanetta set, or Dayanetta's, you're going to be able to turn that Discipline cost into a Hatred cost, thus enabling you to use Natalia's with Dayanetta's and only have to use Action Shot to reduce the cooldown of your Reign of Vengeance. And this is, I believe the fastest way using action shot to reduce the cooldown of your reign of vengeance even faster than strafe while you are using a hatred generator at the same time i do believe that is second in line for what would be the next best way to reduce the cooldown now the big problem with this build then the reason that you're not going to be able to take it too far out of torment six well i shouldn't say that but the reason that you're not going to be able to like push to the top with this type of build is one you're not going to be using the natalia slayer which is going to be giving you a good source of damage it's a great weapon to use with this type of build and it also comes with the 20 to 25 percent increased reign of vengeance which is huge for this type of build the next problem is you're not going to be able to use focus and restraint when you take off that slayer the big problem is you then have to use either a royal ring of grandeur or you're going to be having to use the natalia's reflection i do believe which is the nat's ring thus not enabling you to use the focus and restraint which at this point in the game is like your absolute best source of damage for the demon hunter at least and for most other classes you know i know not all of them are pushing solo with focus and focus and restraint but for your demon hunter that is a very powerful set of rings next skill shadow power with shadow glide this really is not for the life per hit it is for the increased movement speed 30 percent increased movement speed while shadow power is active it's going to be a five second duration the thing about vault is when you are vaulting, the faster that your movement speed is, the more often you're going to be able to vault. As we said, we're using action shot. Every time you vault, you're shooting out four arrows. Well, the faster you can vault is actually 
pretty much equating to faster attack speed, which means reducing the cooldown on your Reign of Vengeance just that much faster. It's a pretty good skill to use. There are going to be some additional options. You could take out Shadow Power or you could take out Vengeance. All the other ones I really wouldn't tamper with too much. Some additional skills. Vengeance with Seed is just great for additional hatred. You know, it's just pretty much what Demon Hunters have been using. Vengeance with Seed gives you hatred for a 10 second, 15 second duration. We're a physical Demon Hunter, so this is a physical skill, so we're getting some value there as well. But some additional skills, you could go with Phantom Knives. That's not going to be too bad of an option. For T6 speed clearing, I don't prefer it, but you know, it is an option. Another one that you could use is going to be Chakram with Shurkrin, Shurkrin Cloud. Now this does not actually shoot things. It just gives you like a little AoE, like you'd see around a monk, something like that. I forget what their skill is, Sweeping Wind maybe. You know, it just gives you a nice little small AoE. You're going to be able to cast this and it's going to last two minutes. That means when you're vaulting through mobs, you're going to be able to proc your legendary gems, which you will be getting into. It's a it's an option. It's not what I prefer. That's why I'm not necessarily recommending it at this point. Another one is marked for death. It's actually pretty good, but the problem is when you're vaulting around like a madman, it's kind of hard to actually target things. So it's out there. It's an option. Now running in hardcore, of course, you always, always, always want to make sure that you're running awareness. I was running this build with around 5 million toughness. Now the gear that I'm going to be showing you is not going to be quite what I was running in the video. You know, my mind's been changed a little bit, but I am going to talk about all the other options out there. Well, not all of them, but some of them at least. So we have awareness, very good. Archery, just great, giving you additional crit chance whenever you're using dual wielding. You're going to have a ton of critical hit damage because you're going to be able to use two emeralds in your weapons, getting some additional crit chance as well as when you have two-handed crossbow on in your second hand, it's going to give you one hatred per second. Solving some of the hatred problems that you may be coming across, just a great one. Tactical advantage, this is going to help you move faster, but as we said, moving faster equates to more damage. Tactical advantage is just pretty much guaranteed you want to be using it. Steady aim, I really like steady aim. Now, you'd think that, you know, you're going to be vaulting through mobs constantly, that this may not be giving you great value. But honestly, you're vaulting th through things so fast, and you're actually killing things before you actually get to them sometimes, that your steady aim value, I do feel like it's going to be the next best for your type of passive that you're going to be wanting to run. Unless you have, like, a really good way to proc call the weak. But for this particular build, I do not. So Steady Aim is just a great option. You could go with like Ambush, something like that. Single out, maybe, I don't know. But these are the four passives that I definitely prefer to run and have been getting some pretty good value out of them. Now we're gonna hop over to the gear here. There is a ton of options for shoulders. Really choose what is best for what, uh, what you think's best. For Torment 6, I really like homing pads. I'm looking for my other pair of shoulders here. Oh, they're actually right there. So homing pads or the Skeleton King shoulders. The Skeleton King shoulders you of course are going to be finding in your Act 1 bounty bags. The thing about them is they roll with Dex, Vitality, and Armor every time. So the four stats that you'd want on there is Dex, Vitality, Cooldown, and then Rain of Vengeance damage. Now you're going to be able to get Rain of Vengeance damage on your shoulders as well as your chest. That's pretty much a must. It's just a great way to boost the damage. You don't want to be running too low on the damage because as we said, we're not going to be using the Natalia Slayer, which is going to be giving us that Reign of Vengeance damage. In addition, we're not going to be using like a Focus and Restraint or anything like that. So using five pieces of Natalia's, and then we have the ring, the boots, the chest, the helmet, and then we're using gloves. In addition, we have the Royal Ring of Grandeur. And the reason for using the Royal Ring of Grandeur is because we took off the regular pants for Natalia's and we threw on the Hexing Pants of Mr. Yan. For Natalia's build, one that's very mobile, using Hexing Pants has just been a great way to just boost the clear speeds for me. So I guess this is kind of where, I don't want to say my build varies or whatever, but this is kind of where I guess players vary on what they feel is the best way to support the Donetta set. There's a bunch of options out there and I do want to talk about at least a couple of them. I do feel that I do want to talk about the weapon statistics stats that you're going to be wanting on there as well, but with the Royal Ring of Grandeur, you could as well use Marauders. Marauders six piece, as I talked about in my last 
Natalia's build video is just really great, being able to use all six companions, giving you toughness, giving you hatred, giving you regen, pickup radius, all that type of good stuff. Marauders is an option, I just feel like you're then going to be sacrificing damage, not going with the hexing pants. Uh, Oghild shoulders and bracers. This is going to be another pretty good option for the shoulder slot. For the bracer slot though, you can see that I am actually using the war chechings here. Every time you destroy a wreckable object, when you're in T6 and you're just basically running through the map, you're going to be destroying destructible objects all the time with those four arrows that are going to be coming from your action shot, as well as with your reign of vengeance, all that type of good stuff. Things are going to be breaking all the time. As we said, movement speed is going to be equating to more damage. More damage just means faster clears. Moving faster, just you're just speeding up the build, giving yourself movement speed. So I do like to go with the War Chechen Arm Guards. You could go with Strong Arm Bracers. That's going to be another great option because we are actually going to be knocking the monster back a little bit. And then as they land, you're going to be able to give yourself that 20 to 30% damage buff. Ancient Parthens for increased survivability. If you're running this in Tor Torment 6, you definitely want to take those out of the equation. Reapers Wraps, if you're really having some kind of hatred issue, there's probably, you know, you need to figure out what the problem is going to be with your gear, but in the meantime, if you're, you know, lagging a little behind, you don't have the best of gear, Reapers Wraps would definitely be an option. Now for the belts, there's a ton of belts that are real good. Pretty much, there's like six belts maybe even more that I would recommend you use in Crashing Rain is a very good belt. It's probably the best belt in this list. The reason that I don't use it is your damage is just so high, you're moving so fast, actually targeting with the additional 4,000 weapon damage that you can get on this belt is, I don't want to say it's hard, but it is going to slow you down if you are kind of trying to target things. Witching Hour, the increased critical hit damage is going to be great. Blackthorns. Now, I would use Blackthorns if I were using the Blackthorns amulet. So if you're using the belt, I would definitely be using the amulet. Otherwise, there's no real reason to use the belt. The buff belt, increasing your movement speed, as we said, gain 25% additional run speed. Now, you'd think, once again, you're vaulting through mobs all the time. You're actually vaulting through them so fast, and you're vaulting... When you're vaulting, I should say. When you're vaulting, you're actually invulnerable so the mobs can't hit you while you're vaulting when you're vaulting pretty much the entire rift you shouldn't be getting hit too often the biggest thing is going to be like when you stop your character on like a ground fix or something like that that's normally when i see myself getting hit the most sash and knives being a physical build we're attacking very often every vault as i keep saying is an attack so every time you vault you're going to be able to deal an extra 550 percent to 650% weapon, weapon damage is physical, just another great option for the belt. The one that I've been preferring to run with, you know, currently is the Harringtons. Whenever you pick, click on a chest, whenever you click on a mob that's on the ground, you know, some clickable object, getting that 130% buff as this belt has just means that everything you come across just instantly dies. As well as, you know, you are in T6, you're farming extremely fast. Once in a while, it's not a bad thing to slow down and click on a chest. That's just going to be increasing your clear times. Since I've been using the Harrington and slowing down a bit to click on the chest that has been giving me legendaries that weren't coming out of chest, well, now they are. It's definitely something that I have noticed. So that's pretty much it for the belts. Amulets, there are a bunch of good options once again. As I said, if you're using Blackthorn's belt, you want to be using Blackthorn's amulet. If you have a Hellfire Amulet, that is probably going to be your next best bet. And if you are using a Hellfire Amulet, I would probably be looking for one with Hot Pursuit. Once again, increase movement speed by 20% for 2 seconds when you hit an enemy. This is going to be pretty much a permanent increase 20% buff the entire time. And then we have here, the Amulets, the rest of them, Hellfire Amulet as I said is good. Flavor of Time, just getting some cooldown on there is really nice. Unfortunately, if this movement speed, this 11% movement speed was 100 critical hit damage, this would be a GG OP amulet, but it's not. So actually the Haunt of Axo is definitely better, or an Immunity Neck is going to be great. Now the thing about the Haunt, and the reason that I've been preferring to use it is, well, I got a good one. But in addition to that, you're going to be stunning all the time with your Donettas. You're going to be able to proc your clones pretty much all the time. 
And these clones are going to, while not deal a significant portion of damage, they will be dealing some additional damage for you, in a, as well as, I was going to say in addition again, but as well as, those summon clones are actually going to be using Marked for Death. Marked for Death, as we know, is a great source of damage, so the Haunt is actually, I'd pray, say, you know, I don't want to say it's as good as a Hellfire Neck maybe, but it is, it's right up there with getting some additional cooldown, like with a Flavor of Time or something like that. So we talked about the belts, we've talked about the bracers, the shoulders. I think that's pretty much it for the gear. Hexing Pants are just extremely good. Now we're going to slide over to, now I did this last time in my video, I was like that's it for the gear, but we do have legendary gems. Now the Pain Enhancer, it's extremely good, because as we said, we'll go back to the vault with the action shot once again, and it says, while vaulting, shoot 4 arrows for 75% weapon damage at nearby enemies, these shots are guaranteed to critically hit. So that means every time that you vault, you're going to have 4 times that you could apply Pain Enhancer. Pain Enhancer, 2,520% weapon damage at rank 44, as well as the secondary is you're going to be able to gain some Blood Frenzy, which grants you 3% increased attack speed for each bleeding enemy within 20 yards. You're not really going to be getting any value pretty much out of the attack speed, you know, when you do get a little bit, it's nice, I guess, but really turning those 75% damage action shots into almost 3,000% damage for each arrow you know now you're not going to be able to stack multiple pain enhancers so if there's only like one monster you know you're not going to be able to hit him with the four arrows and that's not going to be then making him bleed for like 10,000 weapon damage or anything like that it doesn't stack the next gem though so we've increased our action shot to you know like 2,500 weapon damage we'll say in addition once again Every time that you shoot with one of those shots, you're also going to be able to apply the Gem of Efficacious Toxin. Poison all enemies hit, so you don't even have to crit with this, for 4,000% weapon damage over 10 seconds. So once again, now those 75% damage hits are up to like 6,500% weapon damage hits. In addition, if you wanted to throw on like a Sash of Knives, you're going to be able to increase that to around 7,000. So you're going to be able to make Vault with Action Shot do a tremendous portion of your damage. Now the great thing about this is Natalia's that 400% damage buff is going to be applying to your gems and it's also going to be applying then to the poison. So you're going to be able to increase your poison gem while you are going to want to increase your physical gem through your gear. You know, whenever you can get it on your amulet, your bracers, something like that, it's going to be great. Natalia's buff, bonus, whatever, is just a great, great thing. Now some additional ranks, if you did not want to go with the Hexing Pants last thing here, and then we'll just talk about the Paragon Points, is the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. It's pretty much just like an Tally's buff. It's really good. I just feel like I was able to get more damage out of Hexing Pants. Actually, the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac was so good, I felt that I was vaulting once or twice using a Reign of Vengeance, vaulting once or twice using a Reign of Vengeance, and the problem with that is I was actually slowing down my clear times because I could get my Reign of Vengeance back so fast. That was the only problem I really had with Obsidian Ring, is that it, it actually worked so good with this build, I had to stop too often to pause to deal a bunch of damage. Unity, if you're running solo, not a big fan, but if you need the survivability, by all means, definitely do use it. Or the Stone of Jordan, going to be another great option. One thing you will notice about this build is you do slow down on killing elites or Rift Guardians or whatever. Those are definitely, as always, you know, they're going to be your biggest thing that's going to be slowing you down. So Stone of Jordan's always a pretty good option. And now the Paragon Points. There are some additional gems. You could use like a Golgaka Swiftness or something like that. That would definitely be one that I would probably be throwing in there, as well as Taeguk. Taeguk is also very good. The problem that I have with it in Torment 6 is every once in a while, you're going to want to pick up an item, as well as when you're clearing a rift in just about a minute or so, you're not going to be getting full value out of the Taeguk because you know it takes about a minute or so for it to stack to full. Maybe not quite a minute, but you get what I'm saying. Taeguk, it's going to stack every time you vault. You're going to be vaulting a lot, but you're just not going to have the big the big chunk of damage as soon as you know you start the rift. Whereas the last gem, which once again I did not talk about, is the Bane of the Powerful. Gain 20% increased damage. 
really what level it is isn't going to matter too much. In farming in Torment 6, you're going to be able to crush and just burn through elites tremendously fast. But as well as the secondary, which you will be getting quite a bit of value out of, increased damage against elites by 15%. So all the Paragon points. Finally, they are here. Making sure your movement speed is at a 25%. I have 12 for my gear, so getting 13% for my Paragon points. Just max out dexterity, toughness is pretty much a joke. As I said, I was able to run this build in Torment 6 and Greater F27. You know, I didn't really push it too much farther than that. With 5 million toughness, you know, in Hardcore, it really wasn't that big of an issue. So. Last time, I said you want to go for crit chance or crit hit damage first. Unfortunately, that was wrong. Cooldown is amazing. Absolutely amazing for Natalia. So go for your cooldown. Then either get your crit chance or your crit hit damage, whichever one you're going to be needing more. Then, you know, you can just fill up your attack speed. There are breakpoints for certain builds with Natalia's, but this isn't one that you're really going to have to worry about too much. I would then max out my all resistance, my armor, then my life percent, unless you were just really extremely low on life, but at the same time, if you are, life percent really isn't going to do that much. So usually these two survivability stats here are going to be your best bet. Then life regeneration last, utility, resource cost reduction, absolute must, then I go for life on hit, and then area damage. Actually right now area damage is bugged. So, you know, you're not even getting full value out of this. So it kind of makes life on hit even more valuable. And then gold find, as I always say, is just kind of there. So that's pretty much it for the build. I know I said last time in my video that I was going to be covering Rift Guardians. And the reason that I did not, if you slide on over to DiabloFans.com, someone's actually been covering Rift Guardians. So I put my testing away for the time being. You know, I was looking through his guide. It seemed to be be pretty good maybe I'll end up doing one of my own just wait a little while don't need to come out with one you know right after someone just did one give it a while see how things work out so that's going to be it for me I am Chrome Unrust for Core Expert Gaming this is an extremely fast Torment 6 build but having a ton of fun with it if it looks pretty spammy well it is it's kind of spammy but the thing is the more you actually start playing with the build the less that it feels quite so spammy I guess and one pro tip with a build like this is actually paying attention to your minimap more than you're paying attention to what's going on your, on your screen is actually probably a pretty good idea I normally see myself focusing up in the upper left hand or upper right hand portion of my screen and I'll just use my peripheral to look at you know the rest because you're just moving so fast it really doesn't matter the mobs or the affixes that they have or anything like that you just kind of blow things up. So that's it for me. Chrome on Rust for Core Expert Gaming. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Give it a thumbs up if you would. I'm out of here, and you all have a great day.